Hello Lizzie here and today we're going to learn all about how to make Junichiro which is Indian for he who takes which is actually quite appropriate seeing out it's a lovely little shopping bag just neat enough to take to town when we're allowed. Um, so the download you'll find on my website lizziecurtis.com and uh, this is how we're going to make him or her. <laughs> Could be male or female. So it's, uh, it's kind of a scrappy theme. The next three projects that you'll see from me are a scrappy theme. So I've used scraps from my stash, which you'll probably have now because we've we'll be been in lockdown for some time. So we haven't got it, that fabric anymore, so we've got to use it up. So it's made from patchwork squares and even the binding and the handle are made from different fabrics. We've got scrappy bits of ribbon at the front to make a corsage. So that is Junichiro. So the first thing you're going to do is obviously cut your fabric according to the pattern pattern and it's all there for you so you'll know exactly what to do. So the first thing you need to do is obviously to stitch your four squares together. So I'll bring in my machine. So you're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance throughout and we've got two squares of one colour and two squares of another and all you're going to do is right sides together and do a quarter inch seam allowance down the squares to join two and then you'll join two more. A little back stitch to hold just to make sure it does hold the seams together nicely. Little back stitch at the bottom here and then another right sides together here so again there we go and a quarter inch seam allowance don't forget that back stitch. Now when you do this you will actually um, press between each stage but we'll just do this for speed and I'll just whiz, whiz my way through it. So now you've made your two squares, you've joined the two squares together so now all we need to do is just join them so they become four squares so you're going to do it similar to that. You don't have to do it this way, you can have four different fabrics. Um, it will look absolutely gorgeous, that really will be scrappy. Again, little back stitch to start, just make sure you nest those seams if you can, it always makes a difference. And it's such a lovely simple make and really what makes it special is the corsage that's on the front. And obviously I'll talk you through that. There we go. So just cut my threads. Oh no, I don't need to. Right at the top here I do. That's it. So, like I said, you will press that so it looks really super neat. So the next thing we need to do now is to actually pop the uh, warding on and make that a lovely sandwich ready to nest together. So just use some uh, glue adhesive, put it on the wadding, never put it on the, the fabric because it might come through So, and you only need the smallest amount. So that's really super sticky now. And just place your fabric over the top and decide how it's going to be because at this stage you can actually see how the pattern is going to be. So just get those lined up and like if you were quilting you want to actually really smooth those uh, that, that um, wadding out so it's nice, laying nice and flat. And just make sure your seams are flat, like I say you'll press this and the actual centre um, one that, where you join the two lots of blocks together I would actually have that as an open seam, um, it will just lie better that way. So push all that out so it fits that and you've then got a lovely, lovely square ready for your stitching together. So before we put the roses on, the, the corsage, the flowers, I've got to decide where I'm going to put them. I'm just going to make up the, the handle. I've got the binding all ready to go but it's the handle I need to make up next. So let's just get the machine in. Now what I've done here is I'm going to put my raw edges together so there's the fabric raw edges together and I'm going to stitch along here and then down the long edge but actually I'm going to snip that off in the end but it's going to help me turn through so I'm only going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance um, because I don't need it to be I don't need it to be super strong I'm, I'm going to snip it away so here we go quarter of an inch all the way down and this makes a really lovely handle. 
and right down to the bottom and again do a little back stitch just to hold and make it really strong so all I'm going to do now is turn this through so I'll just get my turning tool um, and it's just a tube with a, a, a sort of doweling rod really you can get them all lots of places so I just put the tube into my strap and um, there's a sort of a sharper end and a blunt end. Most of the time I like to use the blunt end just in case that sort of pointy bit will go through my fabrics. I don't think it would because it's so strong, but it's a just in case. And then just ease it up so you're pushing that dowling through and it comes out the other end. It's very clever, but I'm sure you'll have a turning tool. If not, I'm sure you'll have something that you can use. Um, or you can just join the, the, end, the sides together just using quarter inch seam allowance and turning over and just top stitching. So it's really simple to do. So if I use my stiletto and just bring those points out and then I can just snip these away. I don't want to waste too much fabric. <laughs> it's a scrappy project but I'm still being mean as well. <laughs> Right, so that's taking the end off of that. I said to you that I didn't need that. It was just purely to assist me with the turning. So I've got my strap and obviously it needs a little bit of a press. So I'll bring my mat up and give that a press. And I think I'll press the front of my bag at the same time so it's really nice and neat. So just put that seam to the back. Um, it's always neater if you do that. A lovely piece of fabric and it's amazing when you start digging down in your your fabric stash I found fabric that I've truly forgotten about and this this one was one of them and it's so pretty and I'm, I'm kind of glad that I didn't find it before <laughs> so there's our strap lovely and pressed so let's get my piece that we just did give that a little press as well that as well it makes such a difference okay so before we stitch the sides of the bag together we're just going to stitch the flowers now the flowers are made with just a, a long piece of ribbon and i say in the instructions how long you need and, and the width so everything is there for you um, but i've got a piece i've already made them just for quickness and i'm just going to stitch them on but i need to show you how i make them so i've got a wired piece of ribbon here you don't have to have wired but it's a good thing to have and i've taken one of the wires out of one side and that's where i'm going to get um, now I do this in a particular way what I do suggest is that you do use a matching thread because you can see the thread when you gather this up um, so I would have used a pink thread normally but for speed we'll just get this done so I'm starting actually on the wired edge I'm starting on the wired edge and then all I'm doing is bringing my machine stitch down to the edge where there's no wire and it makes a curve I'll, I'll do it and then I'll show you and I've put my machine on the longest stitch it'll do. And with this machine, it is actually the longest stitch I've ever seen before. It goes, it's up to six. So, but the longest, the longest one is perfectly fine. It doesn't matter how long. So look, I've come to the other end and now all I'm going to do, I've, I've lifted my presser foot up, got my needle in, I'm swiveling around and I'm coming back on myself. If ever you do gathering, it's always better to do a double row as close as you can together to the first one uh, but don't cross over if you cross over your original line of, of stitching you're going to have to undo it because you won't be able to gather those threads up so don't uh, use your thread cut if you've got one on your machine i would suggest pulling your threads out like that because you need something to um, sort of hold on to, to to gather up so that's what it looks like. Um, if I show it here, you'll be able to see, hopefully, that we've got like a curve going on just here. And I'm actually gonna snip that away so you can see even more clearly. Um, I don't wanna snip my threads by mistake, so get those out of the way. So look, if you can see there now, that's a nice curve to that uh, end of the ribbon there. It does make a difference when you're making flowers. So I'll just quickly show you how to gather these up. now. Some people say you gather the bobbin thread, other people say you gather the top thread. And I would say it's up to you. If um, whatever's easiest, to be honest with this technique, that they're both as equally the same because the stitches are so long and it's only a short piece 
that it won't make a huge difference. But if you're making a, a big skirt, maybe the bobbin threads are the answer. So look, all you're doing is gathering those stitches up, taking it all the way down to that other pointed end now, um, and then just using the thread. If you had single thread here, that would have probably snapped by now. It makes a huge difference having the double thread. Just take your time, you don't want to snap it, and just bring all those gathers right to the pointed end, right to the other end. Bring it all the way up, and there we have our gathered flower. Doesn't look much at the moment, but what I want you to do is to take this end here and I've made some so I'll show you. Cut the threads off so they're really nice and neat. So you've got a nice blunt end if you like. Get a needle and thread your needle with both of those threads. And then I want you to sort of put the needle in where this point is here. Let's show you on this camera so you can see it more clearly. And don't worry about these other threads, they're gonna get in the way, we'll, we'll cut them off in a sec. Um, take those threads and just start to roll the other end up. So you're starting at the other pointy end there and you're just rolling it up, just like you would if you were making a paper flower. And you're rolling and rolling and obviously you're going to gather as much as you can before you do this and that's what you end up with that sort of design there and then all you're going to do is pop your needle in and you're just going to go across all of those layers you're going to just gather it all in and just get that all joined together if you like and make a really sort of make it nice and neat and nice and tight and again, th go through all those layers, okay? So once you've done that, I'll just put that through. That's a, it's a really big needle I happen to have picked up there. <laughs> once you've done that and you've made a, a nice, neat job of it, let's get rid of that thread. Then you've got your, your little flower. Now, like I said, and you'll, you'll hopefully you'll see that, is that you can see the white thread. So this is what I'm saying about getting a pink thread. But once you start opening up your little flower, actually, look at that, it's beautiful. It's all lost, it's fine. So I've actually made three already. And so all we need to do now is to actually attach them to our, our bag. So it's either, you're gonna have to choose which square. Um, it's hard, isn't it? I think I do like this fabric, so I'm, I'm going to put them in that top square there. And again, all you're going to do is pick up those threads that you had when you joined the flower together, just as I showed you before. Pop your needle back on again, and you're literally going to go through your, your bag that you just made. Now, I'm only going to do a couple of stitches. Um, I'll probably set this better with a, with a hot glue gun um, I do like to use a hot glue gun. If you're going to, if you think you're going to wash this a lot, then use proper fabric glue because obviously that'll hold it better. Um, but for sp for speed and and for just convenience for me, I'll just use a hot glue gun. So that's one flower done, and it'll squidge because it's um, it's got wire in it. So you'll need to sort of readjust it. So we've got diff three different shades. Well, I suppose I've got two different shades of pink and then, and then the red, and it really does complement the fabric. So see what you can find in your stash. If you haven't got three different colors, it doesn't matter. Just make three flowers of the same color. I mean, you might have some hessian or something like that. That would look absolutely incredible. So again, through very near to the one that you just did. So bring that so it's really close up together. Give it a little tug. And then from the from the back, I'm kind of holding my flower and then I can feel the ribbon underneath and I'm just catching it, making sure that it's, it's secure. And like I said, you probably, it's up to you. You might want to stitch it all or you might want to use your, your perhaps your fabric glue, your textile glue, it's up to you just to make it more secure. And the one that I originally made, oh gosh, this looks lovely. The one that I originally made, I put some hessian sort of tails behind it and that looks really nice. So you can add to that if you want to. So again, just using the threads that we use to gather up the flower. So I'm just gonna go right into that center again, bring it in. Oh, look at that, doesn't it look glorious? Oh, 
absolutely gorgeous. So again, make it really tight, squidge those flowers together, so push them together. <laughs> and I want you to find the back of the, the ribbon. I want you to sort of feel around for that to make sure you catch it. And I can feel my needle going through that, no, no bother at all. You want to be careful, I mean I'm doing fairly big stitches here, but you want to be careful you don't gather too much of your fabric up because it will distort your square, but that, that's going to be fine. I'm really happy with that. And it looks beautiful, it just needs a little bit of a, of a, of a sort of a pretty pretty sort of puff it out a little bit but isn't that absolutely glorious so that's going to be the top of our bag there so we mustn't forget that so the next thing we need to do is right size together of both pieces so just decide how you want this to look maybe maybe that will be the top there so I'm going to do right size together um, and you're going to clip that so it's really secure I'm just going to stitch this together I'm going to switch my flowers down again and you're going to go you're going to go from the top here all the way down down the bottom and up the other side and then we're going to sort of bag it out it's got quite a big base to it if I show you the actual finished one you can see it's got a really big base um, I, I quite like that it's, it worked out very well So a quick mention about my gold club if you haven't joined already there's no time like the present just pop to my website find the link that says gold members sign up here and then you have access to my facebook weekly events which is absolutely amazing my girls love it and of course you get the free patterns as well so if you want more information there is actually a video on youtube that you can have a little look at So quarter of inch seam allowance and all the way along. Oh, let's change the stitch down. <laughs> oh, we don't want to stitch everything on six. Um, and you might want to use a walking foot because we've got wadding or batting. So it's up to you. That seems such a little stitch now after making the flowers. So once you've mastered making those flowers, think how useful that technique's going to be on other projects that you might do. You could make a whole summer wreath just using flowers like that. Now I've already pre-made the lining, but you don't need to leave a turning gap, okay? Because we're going to bind that top edge, so you don't need a turning gap. So that's something to remember. So if you think I've forgotten, haven't. Oh, the other thing is you might want to make sure that your square seams are nested at the sides as we're stitching. I haven't checked, but fingers crossed they'll be fine. So let's turn our bag. Oh no, we've got to bag the corners, haven't we? Now then, two and a half inches. So from the point of your stitching, not the point of your bag, I want you to measure two and a half inches. So if I do it and then show you. Now I always open my bag out and get those two seams lined up together. Now you might want to sort of fiddle around a bit so you're matching up your side seam to your base seam. Now if you want to, you could pop a pin in. So once you feel that it's really nice and sat nicely and it's nesting, I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit more, that's it then pop a pin in. You can check again. That's not too bad. So look, there's the point of my stitching here. So what we need to do is just draw our line. So just find my pen. So it's two and a half inches from the point of where you've stitched up along that side seam or the base seam. It doesn't make any difference, but two and a half inches. So let me, let me do it and then I'll show you. So two and a half from there bring that down just there and then what I do is I put one of the lines of my ruler against the seam line so I know it's dead square so that's being nested over that way put my ruler down and draw a line and even the amount of bags I've made I still like to draw a line so you can see there what that looks like there's my line going across, there's my pin holding it all together. So I'll stitch that and then I'll do the other side. 
Now, the other thing to remember with this particular pattern, I don't want you to cut this away. The actual um, thickness um, and strength of the bag comes from using the corners as part of the base. So I'll just keep that pin there because I want to do the other side. So pop my hand in, get my point, get my seams lining up together. And it's so easy. I think you'll like making this. I think also you'll probably make one or two for your friends. They would love it, wouldn't they? So just make sure your seams are nesting. Make sure that that bottom seam is all going the same way pop a pin in just to hold and check again to make sure those seams are lined up yeah i'm fairly happy with that and then get your ruler or tape measure two and a half inches from your stitching line oh that's right on the pin so i'm going to move my pin don't ever machine over a pin pop that pin in there again so i've got my mark so put one of the lines of your ruler along the lines of your stitching just so everything is absolutely square draw your line in it's not so easy on wadding to uh, to do a line but you will you will see it so there's my line on there so just go straight across those seams, make sure they're all lying flat. There we go. So that's both of those corners done now. And the thing about these corners is that we're not going to trim them. Those corners are going to be folded in like that in the base. And that's going to give you a little bit more stability. So with the lining, which I'll show you in a second, we've cut those off. But with this, we're actually going to keep it in place, which is a little bit unusual. So I'm just going to turn this through now. So don't forget, we might have squidged our flowers. So you might want to give them a little puff up again. But we still haven't finished and just box your corners out nicely not bad there we go so that's the actual body of the bag done so we need to now pop the strap on now the strap all you're going to do is stay stitch this in place so all i want you to do is get a clip right sides together find the center line which is dead easy because we've got that patchwork piece and you're going to put the right side to the right side so just find those seams i mean the, the back of the strap will has a seam so you'll be able to easily match it up and then just bring it round as best as best as you can right sides together we're just going to stay stitch that so, um, about an eighth of an inch and this is much better to do this than try to negotiate round clips and pins as you actually stitch the bag pieces together. So just a few stitches before, a few stitches after, that's all you need. And again, match those seams up. About an eighth of an inch, I'll go back a stitch there, there we go. So that keeps everything in place. So there's our strap done. There we go. That's what it looks like. So what we need to do now is actually um, stay stitch the lining in place. Now let me show you. The lining is already completed. Um, and all I've done is exactly what I did before. Stitch down the sides, right across the bottom and up the other side. And I've boxed it out just like before. But this time I've cut these corners off because they're not necessary uh, just adds a little bit more bolt than we need so that's all good to go now obviously I'm looking in and that's the right side so it's the right side I want to see I'm going to pop that inside my bag so we're putting wrong sides together here and the main thing is you're going to get those side seams matched up don't worry about anything else and if you can get the seams to nest nicely as well, that's that's always a good thing to do. Um, and again, just bring your clips in or your pins, whatever is um, comfortable for you and whatever you use on a regular basis. So those side seams now nested together as, as best we can. We're going to have the binding on there anyway, so you're not going to notice too much. And then just kind of pull that and that then 
brings all the layers together quite nicely and if you wanted to we can is to pop another clip where the strap is just to hold your lining and your bag together really no more than that and then you're just going to do again stay stitching and I always do stay stitching because it means that I'm bringing several pieces of fabric together um, without the need for pins and clips when we come to stitch the binding on which again like I say is always a good thing so about an eighth of an inch again and you just have to make sure you catch all the layers so keep an eye on it and uh, like I say just a, you could do a longer stitch if you want to as it's just almost like basting isn't it so just come round the back Keep an eye on those fabrics, make sure the lining's matched up to the, the main bag. Just makes it so much easier. Going over that strap and coming round to the other side, just lining those edges up nicely. There we go. So that's now our lining and our main bag stitched together and it's coming together really nicely now um, and eventually when you give that a really good press it will look absolutely awesome so now we need to put the binding on now with the binding I've made it so or the measurements I've made so it's just a, it's about an inch overlap so you're going to fold your raw edges to the middle this is not bias binding this is just a straight binding I would start off at a side seam or near a side seam so it's out of your view um, and then all you're going to do is start off with a raw edge um, and we've done this technique a few times before so let me just snip that little rogue thread there so I'm going to stitch back and front of the binding at the same time now uh, it's up to you I think it's okay I get away with it um, they line up beautifully as long as you've pressed this well and you keep an eye on things and make sure that the raw edges of your bag go into the center of your binding you should be fine but you could use a binding foot which is purpose made for this job so it's entirely up to you so I'm starting off with a raw edge so I haven't folded anything under other than obviously the long um, sides of the binding when we come round to finish the, finishing this off, then we fold that last little bit over and make it nice and neat. Um, so like I say, you might want to just do the front of this binding and then hand stitch the back or glue. It's a bag, so gluing is fine. Or you just might want to see how you get on. You might be surprised on how good you are Sometimes we just have to be that little bit braver than we normally are. And also, obviously, I'm doing this without pinning or using clips. You might want to clip this. It's entirely up to you. Depends on your skill level, doesn't it? So again, just going over the handles there. And I like to keep my needle going down. As soon as I stop, my needle goes down. If you've got that facility, it's a great, uh, great one to have. So I would just use that all the time. Kind of, it's like your third hand, it holds everything in place. And again, so we're just coming round the bag now. And the fabric that I'm using for this part, I haven't used in the bag at all. So it really is a scrappy bag, it's lovely. The other thing is, um, I was thinking about this when I was putting this together, is you could actually put an extra layer of stability in your bag by adding um, some medium weight stabiliser or something uh, in between your layers of the wadding and the bag and that would perhaps give it more structure. And of course you could use a, a foam interlining if you want to, an interfacing. Um, again, it, you'll, you'll decide what's best for you. So I'm just coming around to where I started. Now this is where I want to actually fold over about a quarter of an inch, I'm not going to measure. And I'm just literally going to then just machine um, straight off. So folding that last little bit, quarter of an inch, 
tucking my seams over, bringing that round. And you might, there's a, always a little raw edge that wants to just stick out. Um, so you might want to just tuck that in. There we go. Just go over the top. A little bit of a back stitch just to hold. There we go. And there's our bag complete. Now, of course, you could actually then stitch your handles across here. I, I've chosen not to. I quite like the way they look. Um, so you could do that. But it needs a good press. It needs our flowers sort of fluffing out a little bit. Um, and this is our Junichero, or Junichero. I don't know, there's, it, it's such a lovely name, I'm not sure how I should be saying it, but it's a beautiful name, isn't it? Now, this pattern that I'm showing you here has been part of my Gold Members Club free pattern. They have three every month, and you'll notice if you're a follower of mine that every month I load up three three more videos which is always the previous month's free gold patterns so this gorgeous bag was a free pattern in June uh, for my gold members watching this now they're kind of rubbing their hands together so that because they know they've already probably made half a dozen of these before you've even seen it um, so it's always worthwhile just going to my website lizzycurtis.com and just having a look at what it, it's all about and uh, I've got reviews on there that the ladies have written for me very kindly and um, I've got ideas of what we do other than the free patterns we have Facebook lives every week on a secret group on Facebook and we have guests coming and going doing their own little projects as well so it's not just the three free patterns it's so much more and very affordable so there we are so that's one of our lovely patterns downloaded now onto YouTube ready for you to actually go to my website and buy the pattern and make as many as you love um, and I hope you make loads <laughs>